Fred Van Vliet was recently on the JJ Reddick podcast, and he talked about the state of the Raptors currently. And he attributed the Raptors' poor play to continuity, the lack of that. Yep. Poor defense and heavy minutes to the starting five, which I think speaks to the lack of a bench. Correct. Although, you know, I, the Otto Porter Jr. signing was supposed to take this team over the top. But, um, hey. you know. Hey, who said that to you? Oh. Now I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> now I'm playing. Uh, but, okay, Fred Van Vliet, Raptors, Drew, in the offseason. We haven't really talked about Raptors at all in this show since the regular season started. This is our first For time really going reason. in depth on them. But, Drew, in the offseason, you know, Scotty, Superstar Leap, he's been disappointing. You can touch on that. Uh, Raptors <laughs> being better than the Cavs. Didn't he laugh tier, for us when we that. had the Raptors in the play? Whoa, what? Was that laugh? Yeah, I was, was that, upset. No, no, he were, definitely gave he us had push, a lot of pushback. He, right? no, he gave ton. us pushback for it's having ton. the Cavs over the Raptors. I did. I did. I had Toronto in the play-in. I'm winning. Yeah. So I just want to hear are your you stance. Yes. They're so. not going to be Cavs playing. The you think so? Easy. Nah, like, nah, they'll probably get it. It'll be worse. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They've been really bad. Lottery pick. Amen. Amen to Toronto. I love it. All right, so to speak yeah, about my Toronto Raptors, listen, through thick and thin, we ride with the boys. Um, but the issue here becomes that the guys simply are just not playing how we've seen them play in the past, outside of, of course, Pascal Siakam, who has been... Pascal Siakam, he's an amazing basketball player, all NBA basketball player. Fred Van Vliet, man, it, it really is unfortunate to see what's happened to him this season. The injuries definitely have taken a toll. You see it in his his body language, his tone of voice when he's having the conversation with JJ Redick. He's being very transparent and honest. His body is failing him right now, and it shows in his play. He's not having that same burst. He's not having that same that same drive to his game right now. And it's really due to injuries. He spoke about it a little bit, too. He said how the game was a lot easier for him last year, and now his role this year has shifted, and now it's been a little bit more difficult for him to adjust. That, on top of the injuries, hasn't boded well for him, shooting under 40% from the field, which is insane. I think it's, what, 37% from the field, something scary like that. It's, it's really crazy to see that fall from grace because last year he was an all-star, and he spoke about it, too. He, he takes things in stride as a... I'm supposed to do all this. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to celebrate these achievements because I expect this from myself. So when he got the All-Star nod, he was like, yeah, I mean, I'm Fred Van Vliet. This should happen. And so for him to, to not have the same success this season, it's been difficult for him to sit with. And, of course, he's been very harsh on himself as one of the leaders of the Toronto Raptors. Having one of your best players struggle has been tough, but at least OG Ananobi has has stepped up this season defensively. He's been amazing, taking the responsibility every single night, but that really hasn't translated into wins because the lack of depth onto this team. Um, there's really not much else to say other than the fact that you expected, and by you, I'm talking about me specifically, uh, another leap from Scotty Barnes to really take that, that superstar leap, and he hasn't taken a leap at all. He just hit the He's, he, no, for sure. He's absolutely. He needs, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. Good Last year, player. he was a good basketball player. And right. if you say otherwise, you know, you, you weren't watching, and I know you were. Um, but this year, he's definitely not been that same player. Recently, he's definitely looked a little bit better. But overall, the lack of shooting really has halted his game. Where last year, at least, he would let it go and have a little bit of confidence behind it. This year, he doesn't trust it at all. And, and, and the defenses aren't respecting it. They're sagging off on him, and it's it's really stagnating the offense as well. And you really see as a whole translate into the to the Raptors' game plan. It, it's not the same of what we saw last year. And the Raptors are having a terrible fall from grace from what last year was one of the best starting fives in the NBA consistently night in, night out, to this year definitely not the same basketball. And it could be due to overutilization due to the fact that their bench is not good. But that's really not an excuse when this five really is a talented, a talented group of guys. <sighs> My nose is really long. It's so big. Thank you. Um, <laughs> enough is enough. The jig is up, bro. The Raptors <laughs> suck. I didn't say anything listen, wrong there. Listen, was they, I supporting they, them? They were the most overrated bit. team in the league. Stop. Last what are you season. talking about? We all knew at this table they were a first round exit okay. at best. A very competitive. They're just a team that plays hard every night. So you know, defensively, they like to play in the margins. They like to get a lot of steals. They like they to do. cause a lot of havoc because they don't have a real true big to get rebounds. So they cause a lot of havoc, and they don't have a good offense, a half court offense. So they just get a lot of steals in transition. They get the ball out quick. Listen. This year, 
Fred sucks. Let's just bad. cut it how what he is. Hey, I'm not the offense that. as a whole isn't good. Nick Nurse isn't a schemes guy. KD pointed it out before. Now you can see it more. He isn't a guy that does X's O's. He is a player coach, which is cool. It's nothing wrong with that. But when you don't have the players, it doesn't work. Gary Trent Jr., he's streaky. Fred Van Vliet, he's a, he's a point guard that literally puts no rim pressure at all. He doesn't have an inside-outside game. His three-point shot, when it's not cooking, he can't do much. I think the other day he took 15 shots, 12 of them threes. I promise you, not a many of them went 12, in. 12, right? Yeah, something it, like it was that. really bad. Uh, the playmaking, he still has that in him, but he can't move much because of his injury. Mm-hmm. So he looks pretty much lost out there. Scotty Barnes has not upgraded from his rookie year. He has took Tragic. A, he has took a decline, and you know I still believe in him as a player to get better down the road. But you have to look at the situation. You know Siakam coming in, he has improved. The game runs through him. When you're an All Star like Fred Van Vliet, when you're a Year Two player like Scotty Barnes, you expect the ball in your hands the next year, especially after the year you have him. But when the offense solely runs through Siakam, it makes it tough for them. And that is three guys who kind of needs the ball to show the improvement in their game. And then you have a bunch of non shooters on the court at all times in a floor spacing league it's not going to work not to mention you have no real big in the east where you need bigs you don't have a bench Otto porter jr was a miss which i knew it was going to be a miss because he doesn't he's his history has shown that he gets hurt a lot and in golden state it was different because that system literally re like it, it elevates any player for the most part any player who plays in that system in terms of toronto that's tough for a player like Otto porter jr he doesn't even play the bench isn't good the team is always banged up and nick nurse runs his players to the ground I think Toronto should blow it up. I think Siakam should be traded. Fred Van Vliet should be traded. Gary Trent Jr. should be traded. You keep OG, LA. you keep Scotty, and then you work on getting more picks, building this team up differently from the core that it has now. But why keep OG and trade Siakam? Because OG is on a team friendly, and he will never be you're, – you're, you're going to have to pay Siakam. Siakam is going to make – I, I believe he'll make an All NBA team. He, he already made one. I'm talking about this year. Okay, he'll, he'll probably might make an All NBA team, which means he's gonna want more money. You Superman. no need to pay Siakam. He's 28, 29 years old. He'll be 30 when you can just pay OG for a friendly, maybe 18 to 20 million dollar deal. He's 24 years old. You know, you know what you're getting with him, and he's not somebody who's gonna demand the ball a lot. Who's gonna create? You know, he's gonna demand a high contract. He's gonna make an All NBA team, so he's much cheaper than Siakam as opposed to Siakam, who's gonna demand 35 to 40 million dollars you don't want to if your team is led by pascal siakam and trust me i am a bulls fan we are led by demar and zach if you are led by pascal siakam your team is not gonna go far in the playoffs that's just realistically how is he's not that type of player he is a number two on a championship team maybe a number three same thing with those guys so you have to won a championship as a number two exactly he's a he's a number the number one was the top five player in the world so it's like Toronto's Crazy is one. Scotty, of, man. Toronto's one of those teams Scotty's I look in no court. man's land because they want to succeed and they can't with this <laughs> roster. It's just not there. And then also you have like you could keep OG because he's not going to impact winning as much as Siakam. This he might make an All NBA defensive team though. I, I, I think he'll make it, but he's not going to impact wins as but much that's as gonna Siakam be will. Money that's going to go into his pocket. Not All NBA. Money. Not all. I mean, did Gobert make an All NBA team? Yes. Yeah, he did. Really, he regular All NBA. Yeah, bro. So I got the stupid ass contract. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. All right. I think you said a lot of good things, you Riv, did. but Thanks, I, I do disagree with your final point about just blowing it up. I do think that, like, in this, uh, I guess in modern NBA, whenever things don't go right and the team you can see is stuck in no man's land, the first reaction is just to blow it up and trade all the good players for draft picks for the future. But the reason I disagree with that, though, is because the Raptors are losing with these players. Siakam, OG, Fred, Gary, the Raptors are the 11 seed currently in the Eastern Conference, and they could very well get a top 10 pick with this core. Like, you know, I look at the East right now, if the Bulls don't don't start trading their players, they'll be in the play-in. The Knicks are competitive. The Hawks are competitive. So the Raptors could still be on the outside looking in, yeah. and they could get a top 10 pick my question, and add to this core. My question to you, what your point is saying? How confident are you in Toronto developing that top pick? Because they've their history has shown they develop undrafted late round picks. And Scotty, who's coming off a down year, how confident are you putting a player in that position where if you do bring in another pick, the offense is still going to be run through Siakam. It's still going to be run through the veteran guys. How confident are you in bringing in that pick with these guys? I'm confident. It's more so I of think, a Scotty thing than it is a Nick Nurse thing. Well, I, I think that. Uh, 
I don't think Nick Nurse is good at X's and O's, but I do think that he's definitely he good. doesn't he yeah. doesn't have the players that allows him the freedom to yeah. experiment with things because he has to play every every one of his starters thirty seven minutes fact. plus a game or else they're going to lose the game and a lot of his players want to win the game. Uh, but if you have better talent in there, if you have a player who can do more things, like let's just say you know they luck into Scoot, which is a long shot. Yeah. Bro but, said the unrealistic one. Yeah, okay, but, you know now you bring I mean, in the Scoot. draft lottery. Anything can happen. So, yeah, but now you you luck into Scoot and Fred Van Vliet comes off the bench, or Eamon Thompson. You get one of the Thompson twins. You know, I, I think that think right now lit. the problem with the Thompson twins is you need spacing. They can't shoot. Right now they can't shoot because Fred is struggling. But let him get healthy. But for example, like coming out of college, we knew Scotty was like a Swiss Army knife player. Yeah. But we knew his offensive game was extremely limited and needed to be developed. Yep. So he's an example of a player that, you know, that development thing, that point is right. But I think in this draft class, there's a lot of players who are polished already who can come in and make an immediate impact. So that's where I kind of like differ because I don't think they're going to need to develop a guy that much as like they had to with Scotty or go to state does with Kaminga. Scotty was the but rookie my thing, of the like year. Even, even if you do bring in one of those guys, I think there's a lot of high level guys in. What's the point? You're still going to be in a position where your ceiling isn't going to change much. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's just, like, I think it's just better than, um, is it trading an all NBA? You trust you guys. You is essentially no, so there's what you're probably saying. A medium. You don't have that. to blow it up, but well, you could he, trade what, what some of the pieces. What does he you say, what does he say with the Gary Bulls Trent all the time? Or? They're in no man's land, right? Regardless of how far we get, we're still a first-round exit. That's the same way I look at Toronto. Regardless of what you do, for the most part, you're still going to be a first-round exit because most of your players have peaked. The difference, though, is that... You kept saying Siakam peaked. He hasn't peaked. Well, the team has. The difference I was with, wrong about the, that. The difference between the Bulls and Raptors, though, is that the Scotty Bulls, hasn't peaked. No. If you think Scotty's, so that's what I'm saying. Well, you know, like, Vucevic is on an expiring. OG hasn't peaked. Demar Derozan is an aging star. He's so not. Your point here is, is so like Derozan is an aging star. Vucevic is mm-hmm. on an expiring. You don't have any serious young talent. At least the Raptors have Scotty. Siakam is in his prime still, and he's like at the beginning of his prime. Not I'm with you. The back I'm with end, you. like a Vucevic or Demar Derozan. No, I think he's like 27. Who Siakam? Yeah. I think Siakam 28. is 28. 28? 28. Yeah, he's on the beginning of his prime. Fred Van Vliet, the beginning of his prime. Uh, Gary Trent, we know what he is. So, like, I think that's the the bigger difference. And they also own their picks. Where, like, the Bulls, in order for you guys to have your your pick this year, you would have to go into a full-blown tank to try to get that. Yeah, but Siakam's contract ends next year. He'll be 29 this year. So, you have to pay Pay him him soon. Pay him at 30. You have to pay him soon. And And there's an avenue. I mean, what if – I also think there's a possibility where they keep Siakam, they keep Fred, they draft one of these – Highly coveted player, Scotty develops, and now we look at the Raptors as a serious team because they have a combination of young talents and veterans. It's true. I think we look at them. I think the 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 future will be looked at them a lot different, but I still re, I still think we're going to look at them as a tough team in the first round that's yeah. going to be eliminated. And, and even if though, it's with like this core at least, yeah. And even if like let's say they keep the their core and then they you know go forward with Scotty and and a young player they draft, the young player they draft is probably going to be what nineteen twenty. Scotty is twenty. By the time they do make a move or Siakam's contracts are up, I mean these young players are just hitting their like, not even their, their prime. Pe- not even their yeah, prime. They're, they're gonna that. be twenty three, twenty four years old. And you know if the Raptors are bad, then you could be bad for two, three seasons. These players are twenty seven, and you get top picks. Yeah, you know I just think that the timetable fits. Trust the, the process. Raptors. But even man. when they're twenty three, you still you have to pay them now. Yeah, I mean, after four or five years, it's yeah, it's I don't know, it's 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 tough. Because Scotty's still three years away from having to be paid, and yeah. then whatever rookie it's, you get, but Fred, I, I do I do feel for Fred because I think that especially for smaller guards, once they once they lose a little bit of athleticism, it's yes. hard for them to recover from that. And, and Fred has never been a super efficient player. When he averaged nineteen point six points per game in twenty twenty, he shot thirty nine percent from the field. Last year's All Star year, he shot forty percent from the field. This year, he's shooting thirty seven percent from the field. So. I do feel for Fred because it's definitely tough to come back from an injury and and not be the same player you are. And I do think that they are trying to develop Scotty and Pascal's taking a, a an increased role. And it's tough, you know. I not this not the same situation, but yeah. Isaiah Thomas going from twenty nine to out the league, similar situation where he got injured. Fred's injury is not as bad, but when you're a point guard that you don't put any pressure at the rim, you're heavily relying on your shot. And you start to lose your legs a little bit, which 
has a large part in your shot. We see these results. And maybe Fred is, is better suited as a backup point guard, you know, not as a lead guard. Uh, I do think that he can do both at his very best. But, you know, we've seen him go from a great six man to a starter to an all-star. And I think he's one of those guys that has a low ego where he just wants to win. And at the end of the day, like, he can fit into different roles. And I hope that he recovers from, from his slump. But the Raptors are stuck, and this team is not good. It, it's just not good. That's why you could still find a medium of not blowing it up and also not having to go all in this year. You I mean, just you have to find trade, who you're going to keep. Yeah, but you would probably want to keep Siakam, OG, Scotty. Those are the three, I think, on this team you're looking at. Like, we're not moving any of these guys. I mean, yes, it, if you could get a superstar type player, but I don't think that's the situation they're in. You could trade Fred or Gary or Gary Trent and get picks to start the rebuild process while also still being competitive with Siakam and OG and Scotty. It's just, it really depends on really Scotty and whatever rookie you're going to be bringing in this year because you already know what the ceiling is with this core. If Scotty Barnes can take a leap, which was some people were expecting this season, but they always kind of lack that top tier superstar. Like Siakam's a really good basketball player, but like we said, He's never going to be the best player on a team that's going to be comp- competing for a championship. Like the fact that the Pacers are ahead player. of him, the Bulls that's are ahead of you guys right now. Name, he will never be a top ten player. It's, it's, but that's okay. fine. Siakam be it's a great number two. Be a top ten it'd, player. He'd be in a great NBA, number bro. two. He's but a top you fifteen player in the NBA right now. Siakam? That's maybe. I don't know. That's maybe. Yeah, for sure. I, don't, I don't even know. He's that's definitely maybe. at best a top twenty. Yes. Fact. Oh no, that's no, that's a lot. Top twenty. Top twenty for sure. He's not. He's not top fifteen. I don't know if he's top fifteen. Twenty six. What twenty six nine and seven? Something stupid like that. He's having a great year. He's having a great year. I don't know if he's top fifteen. They're not winning, and they're like twelve seed. Yeah, the pace. Like, I mean, like the Pacers the pace. don't have a top twenty player. So right you now. have Jalen Brown as top twenty, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Pascal Siakam is better than Jalen Brown. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see other players. Brandon Ingram. Would you say he's top twenty or fringe? Fringe. He's not top fifteen though. Uh, who do you have top twenty right now off the Kyrie. top of your head? No, Who's Donovan better, Trey or Siakam? Shit, I probably would take Siakam. You are <laughs> not serious. Right now, Siakam is playing better. <laughs> exactly. Right now, not, but We're Siakam's not. Oh yes, better absolutely. Than no. Okay. But right now, Siakam's top fifteen. Okay, even, he's having a top even, fifteen season. Even, and last year he was All NBA player as well. Bro, I don't look. Even with Siakam's numbers, they're heavily inflated. Because Enough of with this, this inflation increase. shit. <laughs> like, I'm tired of hearing this shit. Trey, he's not Trey Young, bro. Uh, listen, Trey Young is a better basketball Trey player. Trey Young was the on a team that went to the conference. This season? I mean, I would take Kyrie. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to take Kyrie. Chat for you. What's the message? Where's her public apology, bro? Donated 999. Oh. Interesting. You're on the spot. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, because before I left, prior to, she just bro, ruined so. a great conversation. That's okay. Uh, Prior to when I left, the day of the, the day I actually left, I took I said her cooking was mid, and then I went that night to her house. She cooked the food. It was what indeed she, she not make? mid. She, she made uh, shrimp and fries. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Interesting. Siakam's nowhere near top fifteen. Okay, who? This season. This is in no order. Jokic, Absolutely. Davis, Luca, Embiid, Giannis, KD, SGA, Steph, he Zion, up the PR. Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, close. LeBron James, okay. Donovan Mitchell, John Morant. That's fourteen players. Paul George is better than Siakam. This season? Damian yes. Lillard, okay. that's 15. Damian Devin Booker, that's injured. 16. Okay. Who? Better. So LeBron's, I'm not, sorry, not LeBron. AD's injured. It doesn't matter. No, but AD was clearly significantly Kyrie better. Kyrie Irving, 17. All right. Uh, Julius, so I was wrong. Julius Randle's been better. Wait, you didn't that. say ah, Jalen Brown, right? I didn't say Jalen Brown. Okay, okay. I didn't even say Sabonis. I think Sabonis has been better this year. Again, that's close. Is yeah, there an arguable. argument for a Lori Markin in this year? No. Uh, there's no, not. You can make Siakam, the argument, but, but yeah, I think Siakam, you'd be so. wrong. No, yeah, like I think Siakam's top 20, but he's not top 15. Okay, fair. Hey, yeah. I'm willing to accept the feet on that one. There's a lot of great players That's in the why, league. That's why 15 20 is. is not going to get you best player on a championship team. That's right. not. I mean, he was number two and won a championship. But there's a big difference between number one and number two. So Chris fucking Middleton. What's your point? Chris Middleton was really good. He's a top 30 player in the NBA. I'm going to be honest, bro. Throw some respect on Middleton's run. I'm gonna be honest, bro. Th- that, he's not top twenty. That he's Raptors not. run with Siakam being the second best player. That was like he was second co- best for like two that series. That was like a collection of talents. Yeah, that team that was great. Stop. That was a great. Bro, we we players, had this conversation six, already. Siakam six, was really I think fucking six good. Six or seven players in a finals average double figures. Yeah. We had this conversation already. Siakam was really Siakam good. Siakam was horrible against the Sixers. You were shocked at how good he was. Bro, 